because I know that it's in you that I live. It's in you that I live. And I know today, God, you're going to be able to whatever we need to be met. I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will be real and evident with everything that needs to be done. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, hello there. This is Pastor Michael Nelson from the House of Peace. And I want to welcome you to the Food for Thought. Now, you know what I'm going to say. Please get your pen, your paper, your iPad, or your tablet so that you can do some screenshots or take some notes because God wants to download some things in your spirit today that's going to change, that's going to transform your life from the inside out. Amen. Would you, would you type... God, transform me from the inside out, okay? Now, also, I want you to please share this with somebody else so somebody else can be blessed by what God wants to do today. How many of you know that God wants to do something great today? He wants to do something marvelous today if we allow him to. So, let's get started, all right? Now, today... I want to start a new series of teaching for the food of thought for the food for thought Bible study entitled The At-Risk Behavior of a Believer. Distractions. The world is full of it. Can I say it again? The at-risk behavior of a believer. Distractions. The world is full of it. Wow. Now, let me give you a definition of the word distraction, okay? The Webster Dictionary defines the word distraction as something that directs one's attention away from something else. Simply put, distractions are meant to shift our focus. Wow. And then from a biblical perspective, Distractions are something that turns our attention away from something you want to con concentrate on. And this is exactly what Satan wants to do to us as Christians. Why? Because Satan loves to distract us. Okay? Satan loves to distract us. That's because he doesn't care what that something is. He just wants to turn our attention away from the things of God. Now, let me give you an example of what I am talking about, okay? There's a story called An Interview with God, and the author is unknown, and I just want to read part of it. And I've done this before, but it, the Holy Spirit just radiated and said, you got to be, you got to put this a part of your teaching in order to help people to understand what distractions are. Okay. So uh, the author says, I dream I had an interview with God. So you would like to interview me? God asked. If you have time, I said, God smiled. My time is eternity. What questions do you have in mind for me? What surprises you most about humankind? God answered that they get bored with childhood, that they rush to grow and then long to be children again. <laughs> wow. That they lose their health to make money and then lose their, they lose their health to make money and then lose their money to restore their health. Wow, what a revelation. Wow, that is a revelation. <laughs> that by thinking anxiously about the future, they forget the present, such that they live in neither the present nor the future. Wow. Let me ask you something. Would you type this? Are, are, are you living in the present? Are you living in the present? Are you living in the now? Okay. Are you living in the now? Okay. That by thinking anxiously about the future, they forget the present such that they neither live in the present nor the future. Wow. That they live as if they would never die and they die as they had never lived. That is powerful. 
Now, we must remember that the enemy seeks, according to John 10.10, 10, he seeks to kill, steal, and destroy, okay? What does the enemy want to do? He wants to kill, steal, and destroy us. Oftentimes, when we read that verse, we think of drastic measures, but the reality is all Satan has to do to accomplish his goal is to distract us. Okay, would you type, Lord, help me not be distracted, okay, by the enemy. One more time. Lord, help me not to be distracted by the enemy. So when he distracts us, we become disconnected from God's purpose in our lives. Now, Chandler Vinoy says, as Christians, we must be careful what we are giving our attention to. That's because what we give our attention to is what we are being discipled by. Can I say it again? What we give our attention to is what we are being discipled by. Now, another way to put it is what fills our minds ultimately fills our heart. Wow, that is so powerful. Look what Paul says here in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, that as Christians, we are called, here it is, not to be conformed to this age but to be transformed, what? By the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is good, what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. You see, distractions are prevalent in most areas of our lives. So it's not really a question of if we get distracted, it's a question of when. Can I say it again? It's really not a question of if we get distracted, it's a question of when. You see, a big part of the problem is the fact that our brains are simply not wired to be constantly on high alert, okay? <laughs> you see, we don't need to uh, 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 dive into, uh, 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 dive too deeply into neuroscience uh, to know that Every one mind prioritizes what to focus on, and then it relegates certain routine tasks to our subconscious mind, okay? Now, this leaves our conscious mind to deal with the situations or the crises that are at hand. Now, I think that a lot of believers have gotten distracted from what matters most because they have been captivated by the temporary things of life rather than the everlasting eternal things that is before us. Wow, that is so powerful. That is powerful, <laughs> okay? You see, we're becoming conditioned to distractions. That's right. Can I say it again? We're becoming distractions. Um, we're, we're becoming conditions to distractions. And it's harming our ability to listen and to think carefully, to be still and to be able to pray and to meditate, which means it is a spiritual danger, an evil from which we need God's deliverance that Jesus said this in Matthew 6, 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Wow, all right, that should be our prayer. Lord, help me not to be distracted. Help me not to be led into temptation. Deliver me from the tricks and, and the wiles of the devil. You see, even though we can sometimes be distracted, not everyone is distracted by the same things. For example, let me give you an example, okay? All right, having the television on may be a distraction for some people, while others actually concentrate better when there is background noise. That's why some people sleep with the TV on and then some people don't, okay? It is also important to note that distractions are not always blatant or obvious. In fact, very often they can be rattled subtle. That's right, subtle. 
In a few places in the Bible, God tells us about various people, hallelujah, who he told not to return on the same path which they arrived at their destination. And I want to give you an example. For example, when God sent a prophet to warn Jeroboam about the idols he was making the people worship, the Lord told the prophet not to take the same path home. In other words, you go one way to go tell what I told you to say to the king, and then I don't want you to go back the way that you came. Now, after being warned, the king asked the prophet to stay and eat, but the prophet could not. Why? Because 1 Kings chapter 13, verses 8 through 10 says this, but the man of God answered the king, even if you were to give me half your possessions, I would not go with you, nor would I eat bread or drink water here. For I was commanded by the word of the Lord. Hear what he says. I was commanded by the word of the Lord. You must not eat bread or drink water or return by the way that you came. Wow. By the way that you came. Now watch this. So he was obeying the word of the Lord. So he took another road and he did not return by the way he came to Bethel. Now, this man of God was careful to keep God's threefold command, okay? He ate nothing and he drank nothing and he began to walk a different way home. However, guess what? On his way home, another older prophet came to him and said this to him, 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 18. It says, I also am a prophet as you are, and an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, bring him back with you to your house that he may eat bread and drink water. But this second prophet was lying. Oh, wow. Isn't that something? This second prophet, he was lying. No angel had visited him, and God had not spoken to him regarding the matter. But the man of God believed the old prophet and he went home with him. However, at the supper of the old prophet's table, suddenly, guess what? The old, prophet, or the old prophet received a true word from God. And this is what the prophet, this, this older prophet said in 1 Kings chapter 13, verses 21 through 22. It says, this is what the Lord says. You have defied the word of the Lord, and, ha and have not kept the command the Lord gave you. Can I read that again? You have defied the word of the Lord and have not kept the command the Lord gave you. You see, you came back and ate bread and drank water in the place where he told you not to eat or drink. Therefore, your body will not be buried in the tomb of your ancestors. Wow. Wow, he got distracted. You see, when the man of God left, guess what? A lion met him on the road and he killed the prophet because he got distracted. And his body was thrown into the road and the donkey stood beside and the lion also stood beside the body. Wow. You see, we also see that sometimes distractions come from surprising quarters, okay? We've got to be careful that when God tells us something, that uh, we obey God rather than we obey man. You see, the king tempted the man of God to break God's command, but the man of God refused. His guards was up, and there was no way that he would disobey God for the sake of dining with an evil king. However, when a fellow prophet tempted the man of God to sin, guess what? He gave in, okay? His guards were let down, he got distracted, and he disobeyed God for the sake of dining with a seemingly genuine prophet. How many of you know that some people of God make mistakes? 
You remember I always tell you when I was 25, when God told me to move to Jacksonville and start the church, and there were a lot of spiritual people that said, I don't think you should go. You're not ready. You're too young. And uh, uh, Pastor Jones is send you out to fail. But I knew what God had said to me, okay? Uh, they were sincere in what they thought, but they just had it wrong. I heard God. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, when we, 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 we think we heard God or we, we make God to say things that he didn't say, but I'm talking about when you really hear God. You see, when God speaks, guess what? The matter is settled. And guess what? 35 years, I'm still here because I obey God and I didn't get distracted, okay? You see, there's never an excuse for disobeying God's word. Even a fellow believer, even an angel descending from heaven cannot nullify God's word. So if God tells you something and an angel comes and tells you something different, you know that's not of God, okay? All right? That is not of God. Okay, let's talk about other, other distractions that, that are unavoidable as they come in the form of unexpected circumstances that are sometimes, guess what, beyond our control. That's right. Some things are beyond our control, and we got to think about that, okay? Sometimes there are what we call good distractions. They are actually beneficial for you and maybe even necessary, okay? They may be necessarily. Okay, another aspect. Uh, so the question we want to ask ourselves, what causes distractions? Okay, what causes distractions? You see, distractions can come in the form of people, things, specific places, or environments, circumstances, thoughts, or even temptations. Now, let's look at a few examples of how we can be distracted, or distracted, okay? You see, distractions from everyday work, goals in life in general can be frustrating and can even cause major setbacks. However, things that distract us from God can be extremely dangerous. And this is what I'm seeing in this day and age, especially when the pandemic hit three years ago, okay? People got distracted, even though God had given them a word that I told them that this year you better stay close to God. It's time to get close to God, but people allowed themselves to be distracted. You see, as Christians, when we start to lose sight of God, his word, and his plan for our lives, it can lead us in the wrong direction towards sin, missed opportunities, missed blessings, and discipline from God, okay? So losing sight of God also can cause us to live in fear, in anger, worry, frustration, and doubt, okay? And we got to be careful of that. Let's look at briefly at five main things that are mentioned as distractions. And I may cover maybe two or three of them, and then we'll, uh, I don't want to give you too much, okay? So let's look at number one, all right? Hallelujah. Five main things that are mentioned as distractions in the Bible, okay? The carnal things of the world, okay? Would you type? The carnal things of the world. Now, one of our primary distractions by far is or are the carnal things that the world we live in has to offer, which is why Bo and John warned the first century believers about being distracted by the customs and behaviors of this world. You see, he told them not, uh, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, okay? Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect, okay? So this is what it says here in Romans 12. Do not love the things of this world. It offers you, for when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father 
in you. And then uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17 says, For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and the pride in our achievements and our possessions. You see, these are not from the Father, but are from the world. And this world is fading along, or fading away, along with everything that people crave. But everyone who does what pleases God will live forever. How many of you want eternal life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you say, Lord, help me to stay focused so that I can receive eternal life? Okay? Help me to stay focused so that I can receive eternal life. You see, everything from the internet, television, social media, cell phones, to our jobs, relationships, hobbies, and habits have become things that distract us spiritually. Now, I'm not saying those things are wrong, but when we give more priority to those things than we give to God, they can become a distraction. Like unbelievers, we often end up not only adapting the ways of the world, but literally we begin chasing after them, such as fame and fortune and accolades and pedigree and social influence and, and attention and, and so many other things that we sometimes get distracted and we make it more important than our relationship with God, which in turn draws us farther away from God. Okay, let me give you one more and then we're going to stop. Okay, so let's look at another. Number two, our fleshly desires. You know, that's because the carnal world in which we live in, it offers so much in a way of temptation that it caters to our, what, fleshly desires, which is also another big distraction. This is uh, what James said, and this is how he put it in James chapter 1, verses 14 through 15, reading from the NLT. He says, temptations come from our own desires. Wow which entice us and drags us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, hear what it says, when sin allows to grow, okay, it gives birth to death, okay? But praise be to God, that's the good news, that through his Holy Spirit, we can overcome the temptations of our flesh. Isn't that something? We don't have to give in to the flesh. Come on, somebody type that. I don't have to give in to the flesh. Hallelujah. I don't have to give in to the flesh. Why? Because 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, reading from the NL, NLT says, the temptation in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. Hallelujah. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. You see, when you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Wow, that is so powerful. You know what? I have gone past my time, and I have so much that I need to cover when it comes to being careful, that we be careful that we don't get distracted, okay? But hallelujah, so hallelujah, I got to stop there. And you know what I'm going to say? Please share this with somebody. All right, share it with somebody right now. Uh, 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 if you've got a, a text, you know, text it to somebody. Or, 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 or share it on your Facebook page or share it on your YouTube page, whatever. Just share it, please, because somebody's going to get liberated. Somebody's going to get healed. Somebody's going to get delivered, okay? So, hallelujah. Until the next time, hallelujah. I want to say, have a Jesus. Day. God bless.